T tell me, when was the first time you actually heard Jimi Hendrix? Oh, it was, you know, probably the same time everybody else in the United States heard him in about 1967. But it was right after, after he played Monterey Pop Festival, uh, some guys that worked at our uh, junior high school uh, had heard about him and told me about him because I was already playing the guitar at the time, so uh, people were telling me about different guitar players, you know. They yeah. still do that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's how I heard about him. And, and, and then when I heard him, I was flabbergasted. Yeah. Like everyone else, too. You know, you just go, whoa. Even today, by today's standards, if you and if you really listen to the deep cuts and, the, and some of the, the live shows, that they have on the internet, you hear them do things that with the guitar that you really need to hear it like a hundred times. You go like, "What the hell did he just do there?" Yeah. You know, and these little quick little passages that he does that is really subtle, and people take it for granted. But when you hear it, it's like one of them things. Like he just threw three punches, but I only saw one. <laughs> <laughs> Today's guitar, guitar players ha have a lot of gear to replicate uh, the sounds that Hendrix was creating. I like to use what Jimmy used, you know, the exact same things, you know, yeah. try not mess with the recipe yeah. and everything. So that's how the sound really comes about and everything. And But still, well, you know, I'm, I'm going from, like, like, I only have one experience of hearing him actually live, what yeah. that actually sounded like and then everything else is a recording you know and that that means you're not only hearing the guitar but you're hearing the guitar through a microphone and then onto a recording of some kind you know and so you're hearing a sound so now reproducing that sound again live it may not have sounded like that if you were in the room Listening to the, his actual amplifier and the band all striking it up might have sounded completely different yeah. because of the microphones mm -hmm. of the day and the recording gear and everything. Uh, so I try to take all that into account and then arrive at what I think. And there's characteristics of tones that happen if if you're really careful about it and you know. And plus, I gotta kind of guard my hearing at the same time, you know. Yeah. Because <laughs> so, Jimmy played loud. Yeah. <laughs> so, how long did it take to arrive at the Hendrix tone that you were really happy with? How much experimentation? Oh, you know, I'm still working on that. Yeah. You know? Really, I've never been happy with it. I've always uh, listened to it. I'm, I'm probably my worst critic. It would, you know, to me, I, I think it would take having this, everything be just the same. I would have to be up on a stage with a, a, an old PA system from the 60s, and I'd have to have amps from this, maybe Jimi Hendrix's exact amplifiers only sounded like that. Yeah. And, you know, Jimmy's guitar, and, 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 you know, I held one of his guitars for an afternoon at Monica Daneman's house. Uh, she was who was with Jimmy when he died, and she had Jimmy's Black Strat, and so I got to really check out a lot of things on that. I tried to memorize this, the height of the pickups and how far away from the strings were the pickups and the the gauge of the strings uh, and the height of the strings off of the frets and things like that. And you know, I tried really tried to research a lot about how Jimmy got his sound and got, you know, but even Jimmy was working on it. So, it, you know, what we heard of Jimmy was a work in progress also. Yeah. So, it, you, whenever you arrive at one, then it doesn't quite fit this one. Yeah. You follow? Yeah. If you, if you go, it's like if you uh, play uh, later Beatles, then you better have a Leslie and an organ and all that stuff and, mm. you know, and maybe, you know, in a horn section and stuff. But if you're going to play early Beatles, then you just have to need, all you need is some Vox amplifiers and Rickenbackers and, yeah. and Gretsch guitars and, and some Ludwig drums. Uh, so, the same with Jimmy, you know, when he started out, it was simple, but, but amazing right from the beginning. Yeah. It's like right out of the gate his guitar tone was like beating everybody.
what what's your stage setup? Do you have the the wah, the fuzz face, the uni vibe? Yeah, and but I I set up a different distortion on each side of the univibe because at times he's doing that yeah. uh, depending on what era we're talking about. Now, if, we're, if you're talking about the band of gypsies, then the fuzz is after the univibe. Mm. If you're talking about uh, anything before then with the, the experience, then it's on the right side of it. So I have them hooked up both. I have it hooked up both ways so that I can draw from either one. And at times I turn them both on just to get crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the guitar, I mean, Jimmy had a, he was left-handed but strung it uh, right hand. Um, you have the opposite, I believe. Yeah, lefty, strung righty. Yeah. yeah. So th the way he strung it would have uh, done something to the tension of the, the guitar and been part of the tone as well? Oh, yeah, you know, because of this, the strings to these to the tuner's uh, length is different. There's some really subtle things to things when you're trying to go for feedback and things like that. Mm. It's not drastically different, though, even though the the angle of the bridge pickup is is uh, with exact mirror image, yeah. you know, because of the way, you know, uh, it's at a different angle for a righty than it is for a lefty with a right-handed guitar. All of a sudden, that angle is back here. Now the 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 low string is closer to the the little pin thing on the pickup is closer to the bridge now on the low string. Yeah. For Jimmy going that way on a right-handed guitar, so I wanted that same thing with a left-handed guitar. Now it's the, the same thing. As long I thought as many uh, variables that I could get exactly the same would be integral to getting the correct sound. Yeah. And so I tried to make it. And you know, at, and at times it feels weird because every little thing that I add that was there for Jimmy, it's almost like a voodoo spell. It comes, the, the sound comes flying in and you go, yeah. oh, well, that's why he did that. Okay, okay, now I understand. You know, but, it, you know, when I first started doing this, I didn't really know as much as I know now about how he got it, went about getting his sound. Mm. And people mm. thought that he used special things, but I'll tell you, his Strat was, was totally stock. Yeah. There was nothing special about his Strat at all, really, except for stringing it upside down. Mm. It was all that he did, and then adjusting the action, which you do on any guitar. So. Yeah. And he liked his action low, and he liked this, and he was the first person to take a really light gauge string to a guitar and bend the hell out of it. Yeah. And the, which was another thing that set him apart from all the other guitars. That's why they all went, huh? Yeah. You know, and, but you know, him, him hearing Eric Clapton bending his strings, I'm sure had a lot, lot to do with Jimmy wanting to do the same yeah. thing. You know, you know, and he drew, drew a lot from uh, English uh, players. You you toured with uh, Jimmy's drummer Mitch Mitchell. I, I believe he wasn't always a happy camper, though. Oh well, Mitch was, you know, he, when he lost Jimmy, he lost his best friend, and and I'm sure it disturbed him to no end, you know, and and he acted out a lot, you know. He he turned a little bit like Keith Moonish. Yeah. You know, and and he did some crazy shit, but I think it was. Like in a way, almost daring, you know, death. Like, like maybe if somebody will shoot me, I can see Jimmy again. You know, almost like like that. You know, yeah. I swear to God, I, I I felt this enormous missing. I miss my friend. Anytime someone brought, I never brought up Jimmy. I never said, uh, "Tell me about Jimmy" or anything. I always waited for him to just offer things. You know, yeah. and but people would come up and. And just, what was it like playing with Jimmy? You know, and he'd just get tired of the same old questions about Jimmy and everything. And eventually, you know, he, you could tell it wore on him. Yeah. And, and he just wasn't willing to just keep going through that anymore. And so he'd start to get rude to people sometimes. Yeah. And, Did he ever discuss uh, the black gold tapes with you? Oh, the black gold. Yeah. Well, no, he didn't. Uh, he told you know we discussed things that Jimmy was working on and everything. Uh, he didn't label anything. He just said you know 
working on this or that, you know, more melodic stuff and everything. And I think I did at, we might have discussed Jimmy's idea for Black Gold, you know, that was like a Tommy, uh, you know, a uh, concept record. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we discussed all kinds of things. Um, there was uh, the song 1983, my favorite Hendrix song. Um, I wanted to do that. He said, well, we've never, we only did that in a studio. Yeah. Said, well, I know the whole thing. So, and then we played it. The bass player knew it. So we laid it down for him and, and he loved it. He loved going through it again. He goes, I just was totally exhilarated with that song after that. It was, that was the one he looked forward to at the end of the night. Mm. And so did I, because it's, it's when you pull that one out of the hat, all the Hendrix aficionados go, holy fuck, you're playing 1983. Yeah. Nobody does this song. I, I believe the one time you did see him, you were basically staring at his boots. Yeah, yeah. In the rain... And the rain was dripping off the toes of his boots right onto my head, right, right in my face. So, I mean, it was just like, I kept on having to blink and wipe my eyes, you know, and get more views of him playing. And it was because I was forced up there, you know, by the time he was playing, people were all standing, and uh, they forced you up there, you know. And if you're, I wanted to be in the front, and so that I just got forced right up close to where I had to look straight up at him, you know. Yeah. Which was kind of a weird side of him. Thank God he came to the end of the stage and played. You know, otherwise I would have been like staring at the edge of the stage all day. You know. Yeah. So tell me about the show you're bringing to Australia. Well, I'm. I was just telling someone this about this the other day. He said, "What's your show like?" I said, "Well, my show really hasn't changed in one way, and that's the." What I'm trying to do is portray Jimmy how he would be today, but not only how he would be today, but on a good day. And I'm also trying, you know, there's, I'm trying to do that. I'm also trying to be a substitute teacher, um, and I'm trying to uh, portray myself also. Yep. And all these three things keep poking through throughout the show. I'll do things that Jimmy would never do in the show, like the end of the show, drag three people on stage and put guitars on them and, and have them air the guitar along with Purple Haze. Yeah. Jimmy wouldn't do that. Yeah. He might, he might have thought of it later, but, you know, this is something that I thought of, and I, and I noticed that people really enjoyed that. We, we were kind of the first tribute act, but I never tried to make it like an act. I wanted to show what Jimmy's, if anything, it's what Jimmy's music did to me. Yeah. Which is, and then I know that because Noel and Mitch and Buddy all said the same thing to me. Why are you jump around so much? And I said, this is what Jimmy's music does to me. Yeah. It makes me want to jump around and jump and shout, and it makes me crazy. <laughs> it drives me nuts, and I can't help it, you know, and, and so I'm going to portray it the way that I do. Jimmy wouldn't bounce to the beat and dance around on stage. Like, I'm, I end up just kind of going crazy up there. 